for me and for Michael as well, I think that that's really what, what made us pass a challenge and is making us more successful traders every day. Welcome to Trade Happy. Welcome back to another Trader Podcast episode. Sit back, grab a notepad and pen, and take some notes. Today, we've got two FTMO funded traders on the podcast. They give great insights on psychology and experience for aspiring FTMO traders. Please welcome Michael and T. How are you guys? I'm good. I'm great, mate. Thank you. So, for anyone that doesn't know who you guys are, um, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Well, my name is Michael, and I've been trading for about five years now, on and off. But um, basically, I started with binary options, got attracted to the get rich quick scheme in trading. And obviously, if that doesn't work out, it doesn't really work like that. If you want to become successful in trading, you have to take the long way around and basically learn everything from the beginning, learn the basics. So my journey in trading has been very long, and that was due to basically it not being very structured. I sort of went in did a little bit, went back again, did something else. And um, eventually, after about three years, I met my friend here, T, and um, we started trading together. And that helped both of us because I had some knowledge, basically, and some skills. He had amazing discipline. And then we joined together, basically, and ended up trading. So I'll let you tell your story as well a little bit. Yeah, so for me, I'm, I'm T. Similar to Michael, I started off kind of attracted by the whole get rich quick. Originally in cryptocurrency, when sort of Bitcoin really started going up in price, thinking I could basically gamble because I didn't really have any knowledge of trading. Eventually started reading up more about it, obviously met Michael, and that's really where sort of my trading progressed. Um, learned, learned, you know, some, some basics, really the basics, learned some strategies. We started working together, sort of combined forces, like I say, his knowledge, sort of I had the almost like the psychological approach to it as well, because I studied psychology at uni, and I feel like that helped a lot. Combining forces is what really sort of escalated our trading and actually very quickly as well um, I thought it would take years to learn but it doesn't have to if you have the right approach mm. So did you guys start did you learn together or was it One of them te- like maybe Michael teaching T how to trade. I, mean, I wouldn't say for, like, taught him basically. I just showed them exactly what I did I showed them some material I learned and then if he had any questions obviously he came to me and asked me and um, but it was more, again, more me showing him what to do. And then we essentially had a goal and a plan. And for about six months, we spent demo trading together. And sometimes we'd meet up together in each other's places. Other times we'd phone each other. And basically every single day without fail, we'd turn up in the markets and trade our plan. I made many mistakes along the way, but I think our biggest lessons came for both of us when we demo traded. And that's where our learning progressed the most. It's, it's mm. almost like... Obviously, coming into trading, I wasn't quite, uh, we weren't quite on an even playing field. But as soon as we started working together, I caught, basically caught up to Michael quite quickly because obviously when you, when you have someone who's more experienced than you, ultimately in any field, that's going to help you so much more than just reading books or, you know, watching courses yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, um, you guys, are you both FDMO traders? As in funded traders. That's correct, yeah. We both trade. I mean, again, once we started our um, journey with FTMO back in March, and again, everything we done was together. Every trade we took was together. Every morning we come in and we have a little conference call, if you like to call it that, and um, every decision we make based on every trade, it's a decision we make together. So, yeah, we both fund the traders. We both follow the same plan, and, and again, doing it together is a massive benefit for both of us, I'm guessing. So do you have separate accounts, or is it a joint account? Yeah, we have separate accounts. We, he has his own fund account, I've got my own, but then the trading is basically the exact same strategies. Ah, right, okay. So did you take the FTMO challenge to, um, at the same time? Yeah, everything was at the same time. Yeah, we started, I think our, well, day was the 9th of March of this year that we took our challenge together. And as I said, everything we've done was the exact same process, just separate accounts. Right, okay. That's interesting because a lot of uh, traders kind of, most of them anyway, trade on their own. And it's quite uh, original, I guess, to have traders that are doing the exact same strategy and taking the same trades together. I've not heard of that before. 
yeah, I mean, I think, well, what he said before is basically we combined forces and it's um, he's had the psychological aspect of training. I had the experience and the skill, if you like to call it that. And again, training to be a very lonely game. Um, you're on your own normally. It's you and the screen. And if you make mistakes, it's quite easy to just quit. But if you've got two of you there, you can keep each other accountable. And it's, mm. I find it much easier, much easier like that. Ultimately, I find so, I find tra- a very important sort of trait in, in, in trading is discipline. And like anywhere else, uh, like, like in any other really skill or whatever you're going to approach in life. And when there's two of you, you can also... You can either like sometimes you, you know you, you you might want a revenge trade or something as an example, but when, okay, when you're by yourself, it's very easy to sort of think yourself into making a bad decision. But when there's two of you, you call each other out. For example, you know, oh, you're gonna go and uh, open a position which you never would normally open, and you can be like, hey, we don't do this. This isn't part of our plan. You keep each other far more accountable than when you're trading by yourself. At least, at least in my experience, and I would agree with that. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So do you have any advice for traders that are trading on their own about how they can keep themselves accountable without having someone else do it for them? I think it's well, it's important to practice discipline. Um, it's, it's very hard to do, obviously, because it's, it's, easy, it's easier said than done. But I think from my experience, the best thing to do is basically at least surround yourself in groups of traders. Basically, there are plenty of forums, on, even groups on Facebook or Instagram, where you can at least speak to people. And the great thing about that is the people are on the same journey as you. So if you surround yourself with people on the same journey as you, they'll understand you. And if you post something about trying to make a mistake or something, they'll easily guide you to do a better thing, basically. Yeah. Another thing I would say as well is if, again, if you're by yourself, you can't ever deviate from your strategy and your plan. You have to have ice cold discipline. And it's obviously a little harder, I, f- I think, by yourself, like I say. But ultimately, that's what's going to make or break you. Because if you start deviating and if you start doing things you're not supposed to do that's where you're going to have issues that's where you're going to start losing money it's it's a very dangerous sort of path to go down so yeah you, you need to just be you need to have your goal you know in sight and just follow that and you can't do you can't be making any mistakes there yeah so if you had to start the FTMO challenge again would you change anything or would you do exactly the same as you guys did because obviously you passed the challenge and everything but was were there aspects that you would change and um, well actually funny enough we've actually applied for another challenge just to basically increase our capital uh, a bit quicker so we're going to start our mm. new challenge alongside our fund account tomorrow and we're not going to change anything actually because it worked out very well for us i mean we don't believe in luck in trading but if there was one aspect basically we were quite lucky that when we did our a challenge at the beginning we essentially made our big profits when the whole coronavirus came about so the markets were very crazy back in march and we really capitalized on that and but having said that we had a very structured plan on how to go about things if we were not if we not had that luck basically so if the markets are just basically normal uh, we will essentially our first goal is to protect our capital because the way it works with the mo is if you finish a challenge and you haven't possibly passed the a profit target but you've um, you've managed to keep your risk like they ask you to do and if you stay in profit after the 20 days of trading which is a well, calendar month you can do another challenge for free so our plan first of all is to pr- protect our capital and then basically we follow our plan 100% because we know our strategy very well and I think doing FTMO you need to really know the ins and outs and all the numbers of your strategy because you need to know how, how good are your good month and how bad are your bad month. So we knew there are certain months in the in the year sometimes that we have a slight drawdown. And we were prepared for that basically by saying, okay, if we reach a certain number of losses, we will reduce our risk. And at the same time, if we're winning, we can potentially increase our risk a little bit because we've got a bigger buffer. So ultimately, yeah. we're not going to do anything different because again, we, we know our plan very well. We know our strategy. And, and that's what makes everything easier because you can trust the process basically. So did you do, obviously back testing, but did you do, um, what I'm trying to say is, did you use any software when you were doing the back testing or was it just trading the demo account? Um, our back testing was actually fully manual, basically. It's, it's a painful process in many ways, but um, it's got to be done, in my opinion. It's, you need to know your strategy, basically. It's, um, you can have the best strategy in the world, but if you don't know the ins and outs of it, in terms of risk management, basically, it's, it's not going to work. So. 
we have to basically mm. go back two or three years and see how every year performed and how every month performed and so on. So um, it will be easier with software indeed, but that's possibly going forward when we use some software to our trading, but at the moment it's all done manually. Right, okay. Um, so kind of going off from FTMO, um, what does your average day look like? Well, average day week. Or is there an average day? Um, yeah, I mean, well, right now it's a bit different, obviously, with our whole world pandemic. Mm. Um, but typically we'll wake up at around half past six in the morning. And our trading is the first thing that happens. So we trade the European Open session. So our trading starts from 7 a.m. And usually we're done by nine. Sometimes it goes a bit longer, but we'd like to be finished by nine or 10 at least. And, and then basically after that, it's our own free time. We've, we're both very passionate about the gym, so that's actually how we also became very close and work on ourselves because we both go to the gym. Um, so we usually gym two, three hours and then again, just work on self-improvement, uh, discuss future plans and and yeah, that's about it. I think I'll to that. Yeah, well, actually about the gym as well, I, it's, it's funny you say we met there, but it also I also find that it really helps my trading. I think Mike would agree. Absolutely. Because ultimately in the gym, it's about doing it's about taking small steps every day over a very long period of time to achieve a goal. And that's essentially what trading is. Because I used to approach it almost as like, right, let's go in there. Let's try and get a big win, you know, a lot of risk, risk like 20% on my account or something. And that's how you blow up. Same thing, in, you know, in the gym. You have to take small steps every single day and eventually you'll achieve, uh, achieve your goals. That's right. It's like laying mm -hmm. that one brick until you basically build a whole house. If you like it, it takes it's one step at a time. And, and again, that, that's how we, at the gym, we keep each other accountable, we help each other at the gym, and we do that in the gym as well, so. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, with the psychology, kind of, of applying the gym to the trading and taking those small steps. Um, so, would can you describe your strategy in one sentence or two sentences? Um, just for anyone that wants to get an overview of what you guys do. Well, our approach to trading is basically we like to keep it simple. Um, it's we again we trade the European Open session, so we're in the UK and Scotland. So at seven a.m. in the morning, the markets tend to move a little bit more than from overnight session in Asia. Um, so we trade two markets only. We stick to that because again it keeps things simpler. We trade one currency pair, the GBPUSD, and we trade the DAX index. And basically on the GBPUSD, we look for breakouts. We tend we've seen a pattern basically that overnight. The price action seems to be very quiet during the Asian session. So we look for sort of like London Open breakouts, you could call it, but it's some kind of our own variation of it, basically. And then the DAX seems to be quite an aggressive market sometimes, which we quite like. So um, we essentially look at previous day's levels. We look at the highs and lows of the previous day. And we look at the gap, and then we either decide to fill the gap or ride the gap, if you like, depending on the price action on that day. Hmm. Um, okay, cool. So I guess you kind of touched on it. Um, what I was going to ask next was what does your typical trade look like? Um, do you have like a set stop loss and take profit or is it something that's a bit more fluid? Yeah, well, um, usually our stop loss, for example, will be a uh, most recent high, most recent low or perhaps a strong level of structure. Um, we determine our position size based on the distance of our stop loss. And then our target, again, it could either be a previous level or sometimes it's a fixed ratio of at least one to one reward to risk. And basically with our approaches, we don't overtrade. So the way our strategy works, we can only place a maximum of three trades. Sometimes we finish the day with one and done, which is fantastic. Other days we have two. And then there are some cases if we, for example, lose one of the trades, we have a second chance entry basically. Um, and yeah, we place a maximum of three trades in a day and again, most of our trading actually in the morning is literally sitting on our hands and waiting for either a setup or sitting on our hands mm. and waiting to manage our risk to basically, once we reach a certain level of profit, we for example reduce our um, we reduce our risk to break even and that's how basically, how, that's how we approach it. Right, yeah, okay. So how long did it take to develop that strategy? Well, it's actually it's quite a, bit of a long story because we, when we first met, we were kind of more into trading stocks. 
Uh, you know, the, we had an approach to trading stocks basically where once again we just trade the open. So at half past two UK time, the New York stock market opens, which is obviously half past and in New York. And we um, essentially we love the momentum and the volume and the volatility of the open in New York. Um, however, we found that with FTMO, um, basically the way we want to trade stocks is not really we're not really able to do that with FTMO because the brokers they offer don't really offer that kind of trading. Which is fair enough. It's 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 quite a you could call it a bit higher risk because again the volatility and that. So we can't trade that way with FTMO, even though you can trade stocks overall, but not the way we wanted to. So then I sort of had to basically go back to my forex sort of strategies I used to trade back in the day when I first started, because once again all my life, all my trading life, I wanted to basically trade very simply, trading the open, just placing one or two trades per day, and I had to develop a strategy sort of over again the London open session basically and so it didn't take that long to develop it really it just the, the hardest part of it all was actually the risk management because the strategy any strategy can work really if you have sound risk management in place my biggest mistake back in the day was that I would trade the same way I trade now however I have much worse risk management that for example I'd always take my profits early and I'd let my losers run whereas now especially having two of us we just always decide no we're, we're sticking to the plan at least one to one worth the risk and basically yeah so to answer your question it, it didn't take that long to develop a strategy but it took quite long to basically practice trading it if you like because um even though we didn't fully practice the specific strategy we had a lot of experience on trading stocks on, on demo accounts so um it was more about taking the time to basically master trading it rather than developing it it was also a bit of a readjustment period because the way we traded stocks we were influenced quite a lot by um, quite quite a well-known YouTuber Andrew Aziz from Beable Traders, and, and and his methods. So it's it's a very sort of high, quite a high risk. Not so much of a high risk, but it's a very sort of high frequency style of trading. You can be doing a lot more than three trades in a single session. You can um, you trade extremely high volatility, obviously markets because you're looking for you're looking for big moves. Whereas this is sort of it's it's a lot slower. Uh, obviously, it doesn't take. Does it takes way longer because we would probably trade stocks for what Michael probably about up to half an hour. That's right. Yeah. Whereas right now, you know, we could be trading until, well, usually it's about ten. So it's a very different a different approach to trading, but also was quite quite novel to to sort of experience that because going from from stocks to the the forex market and also the DAX, it was it was a very it was an interesting trend transition to make and also a good learning experience. Yeah. Is the psychology different, have you found, um, trading in that short period of time? Because obviously, I can imagine that there's a lot of new traders that are going to want to overtrade in that small period because they think after that period's done, they're not going to be able to trade. I mean, that, I, f I think that depends on the individual because, I mean, for example, I can't swing trade personally because I'm not a fan of waiting, for example, only for one or two setups per week. For me, I have to have at least one trade per day but I also don't want to overtrade, so I only want to do one or two. It's a bit strange how that works. Um, I think I think it depends on the individual how risk tolerant you are. Um, and I know overtrading can be a well, it is one of the main problems of people that trade. But that's again, I just think it depends on the individual. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you guys use um, any fundamentals when you trade? Even though it's quite short term, do you have like an, an overall fundamental guide? No, we don't actually know. We, um, again, the way we used to trade stocks, we would only basically look for stocks that have had some either earnings or um, uh, mergers or something like that. But with, with our strategy yeah. in Forex and then with the DAX, we just basically, it's, it's all to do with price action basically and technical analysis. There's The only thing that affects us with fundamentals is with FTMO, if there's any major news released, we are not allowed. We are not allowed to open trades two minutes before, two two minutes after the news has been released. But so far, we found that it's not affecting us at all. And um, again, for us, the way we look at news, like we, we wouldn't. If it's good news, doesn't mean it's, the stock's gonna go up or something, or the, or the price's gonna go up. The good thing about news is, we know that when there is news, it typically means that this, the price will move quite aggressively, if you like. So I think, yeah, we. We don't really take into account what the news is, and essentially, with trading forex and DAX, we don't again we don't look up on the mouse at all. Right, um, and 
being quite short term uh, traders in terms of trading every single day, do you use algos? Is that something that you've had a look at or considering to do in the future? Um, no, we we haven't. Um, we haven't. We don't use them at all just now. No, I mean it's possibly we, we are thinking about going forward to automating one of our strategies, um, simply because it is sometimes painful, painful just sitting there for three or four hours and no setup happening. So one of our strategies um, we we'll most likely look to automate at some point, um, but at the moment, no. Also, it just shows that you know, again, if you if you do have a very simple sort of binary strategy. And, you, and you're not able to code it or you don't know how to or you don't want to, you don't need to. You, you can just obviously sit there and wait. And that, that's, that's an approach. You know, you don't. Some people obviously will have that knowledge or will, will pay someone to automate them. But you, it's not it's not a necessity, obviously. Yeah. I suppose if it's um, a really simple strategy that you can code, it takes the emotion out of it as well, doesn't it? Um, especially for newer traders or struggling traders it could be quite good um to do of course yeah so what was the i guess this is for both of you guys as well what was the most difficult process of becoming profitable for you i think for me was basically or, or was there anything for me it was basically the fact that um i couldn't get to grips i i basically spent too much time looking for the holy grail I was looking for a strategy that would return me 20 to 40 percent a month and and that was mainly because I was always looking from the approach that I will start trading with maybe 1,000 to 3,000 pounds only of a small account mm. so I was looking obviously I was trying to get those massive gains because I was somehow trying to get my account to grow quickly so my biggest process was basically shifting from that to actually then realizing that no it's actually much better to trade with say 50,000 to 100,000 pounds and quote unquote only making three to five percent which is obviously much more realistic much more achievable and it's again trading is, is a business where it's not about the more time you put in it's the more money you have the more money you can receive by the same amount of return it's, it's, it's a game of percentages it's not about a fixed amount of pips or a fixed amount of um, fixed amount of pounds per day it's a game of percentages so for me the biggest problem was basically trying to shift my mind from trying to find the holy grail and return massive amounts to actually realize that it's better to have more money and make smaller returns and basically trade with lower risk essentially right yeah so the, t did you struggle with anything yeah so for me the, the biggest thing was uh, obviously before i met michael i was just doing silly things jumping to jumping to strategies and, and jumping markets and not really not really having a direction but ultimately two things i realized is one is accepting that you're going to be wrong so for a lot of people, they'll go into a position, they'll open a trade, and it'll go against them, and they'll think, actually, you know what, no, it'll come back. And that is a very, very dangerous mindset because, okay, it might come back, but how much are you going to lose? How You might get margin called at some point. Um, so, you know, you might be risking, you might be saying, I'm going to risk 1%, and then you don't have, a, you don't have a, a concrete stop loss, and it drops below or above that level, and it keeps dropping or keeps going against you. And, you know, wh where's that going to take you? How, what's the loss you're going to eventually have to sort of accept? Is it going to be 10%, 15%? And also risk management. So I realized that, you know, a huge part of trading is risk management because if you don't have a concrete plan, it's, it's, a, it's a very dangerous approach because ultimately when we first started trading stocks, so we were profitable, not as profitable as we are now, but we also didn't quite have our risk management in place. It was a bit... Like we knew we had a plan, but we didn't always stick to it. We'd sometimes risk too much. We'd sort of, you know, put, put our um, put our stop losses at quite arbitrary levels. Whereas when mm. we moved to FTMO, I think the fact that, you know, there's going from demo to real money, there's, there's money on the line. And it, it sort of forced us to really be very, very black and white with our, with our risk management to not make those mistakes that we were making uh, trading trading stocks. Yeah, I'd like to actually add to that, basically. Yeah. It's, it's a case of, we used to focus on how much we can make, rather how much we can lose. And once, every time now, we basically look how much are we risking, that's the first question. We don't care how much we can make. Our first question is how much we can lose. And I think for both of us, that was the biggest shift and our biggest progress was made. Because essentially, if you only focus on how much you can make, you'll make mistakes along the way because you're just going to try and make that money. Whereas if your first thing to solve is how much you can lose, 
I think that will take your trading a yeah. bit further. Yeah, so kind of going on from that, you, you mentioned that uh, trading like a small account, you have the kind of mentality of you need that big gain. Do you think that if someone's not profitable on a small account, they can be profitable on a larger account because they they don't need to make that well quote unquote big amount of money. I, th I mean, I think so. I mean, in my case, that's been the case to be honest with you because I mean, I've traded a few small accounts in the past, and I mean, it's also a case of back then I had not the same experience, but and also with us, it's, we had FTMO with the big account, so basically. Because FTMO was such a big end goal for us that we knew that if we get if we pass it, basically, it's a life changing amount of money to be trading with, basically. But with a small account, it's 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 almost easier to to risk more because if you have a trade open and let's say you have one thousand pounds and you're you're risking two percent, it's twenty pounds in the line. Whereas if you're trading with a hundred thousand pounds, two percent is two thousand pounds. So you're a lot less likely to accept that big loss with a bigger amount because it's, it's a bit psychologically, it's a bit more difficult to deal with a bigger number. Um, I think that it's, if you can't trade a small account, it's, it's all about psychology essentially. It's, it's um, how I put this. Basically, I was never really profitable on a small account, but going to a big account, I found it easier to trade with, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I would agree because if 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 you're if you're on a trade with with a thousand pounds, and you're up say I don't know, two or three percent on on like on, on our kind of um, trading style, so you know it's a very sort of quite quite short term uh, trading. That's that's thirty quid. That ultimately that's not a lot of money. And you you can and we did this. You you forget that that's actually three percent. So if you had a hundred thousand, you know, you're looking at three thousand pounds. That's a lot of money. So it's scale. Obviously, it scales very quickly. So I would say, yeah, trading with a large account is easier as long as you stick to the plan. Because if if you don't, it's also a lot more destructive. Because if you lose 10% off of a grand, that's not really that big of a deal. Let's be honest, it's, it's 100 quid, right? But if you're losing 10% yeah. off of half a million, well, then you've got bigger issues. Yes. Um, and do you think that... So if someone isn't profitable on that small account, what do you think they need to do? to become profitable on a larger account because obviously that's quite a big jump to go from not profitable with a small amount of money to being profitable with a large amount of money i'm not sure like what kind of psychology you might need or i'm not really sure i think it's important to basically disconnect yourself from the money and again mm. stop thinking in terms of amount of pounds or pips just think of in terms of percentages if you're making for example five to ten percent on two thousand pounds that's still in percentages. That's not. It's not all of return in pounds. But again, you have to think about the percentage. Stop thinking about the pound value, if you like, because again, in trading, it's about percentages. And um, essentially, I think yeah, I think the most important thing would be to basically disconnect yourself from the money and think in terms of percentages. That's my opinion. Also, you have to take a step back and think: Why aren't you profitable on that small account? What what variable is it that, that's stopping you from achieving that? So. If you have, for example, a strategy that you've back tested and that you know has a height and a 70% chance of, you know, ending you on a, on a positive month, well, that then it's either you're just having a bad month or your execution is flawed. You're taking, you know, you're taking your, your wins too early. You're not disconnecting yourself from losses. So ultimately, if you do have that strategy that you know has a very high chance of probability, Scaling up shouldn't really be a problem as long as everything else is nailed down. Yeah. I think I would like to add to that. Basically, uh, it's um, it's also if you if you're demo trading or trading in real life, it's it's. I think our biggest shift in success happened when we started logging our trades. And essentially, what happened was we realized that every time we lost money, it was either simply because that day was an unprofitable day, or more often than not, we found that it was due to us not following our plan. So I think when you actually log every single trade, open a spreadsheet, whatever, and log your trade, entry, exit, and then write a little comment. And basically, every time you see that you lost money, and if there was, if you violated your rules, that just shows that sometimes you lose money, not because of strategy, but because of your own little mistake, basically. I will agree to that. Yeah. Well, uh, when we started logging our trades, uh, back when we were trading stocks, uh, our sort of whole mentality and actual profit levels change completely we sort of started 
approaching it in a much more professional manner. And because ultimately it's a case of you, you don't want to have that mess up on your log. It, lo it looks bad. You know, if you if you feel accountable for, for your trades, you're not going to want to have these huge losses and write, oh, you know, I was a I, I revenge trade pretty much. You just have to be honest with yourself ultimately. Yeah. And so do you use uh, any software to do that journaling or is it something that you just do maybe in Excel or something like that? Oh, well, right now, luckily for us, basically FTMO, like all the trades are being logged there. Um, so for my, myself, I basically, have, at the end of every month, I just essentially take a screenshot of all the trades I've taken and put them in into, well, just save a photo basically. But before FTMO, we essentially just did a spreadsheet of it and entered the stock we traded, basically time we entered sort of direction and followed by a little comment saying what went right, what went wrong. Right, yeah. Um, so obviously, if you have been journaling for quite a long time, is there one trade that stands out that you can remember for a good or bad reason? Well, actually, I think I would say we've actually had a trade a few days ago that stands out to us because we... The way we trade, this is, this is only going for the DAX. DAX, the way we trade, we essentially trail our take profit and um, depending on the momentum of the market, the trend and everything. So the target profit, the actual target of the level was rather huge. Um, and we know when the target is rather huge, the market doesn't typically go that low or high for that matter. So on that specific day, we were essentially up over 4%. And because our strategy said to us, well, it can keep going, we essentially didn't take that money. We just reduced our risk to the full capacity. And I mean, in the end, we ended up being stopped out for break even. And we weren't really that mad because we followed our plan. But at the same time, it's we left a lot of money on the table. So it's um, yeah. you have to sometimes realize that a losing trade is not a bad trade as long as you followed the plan. And in that case, okay, it was a lot of money to leave on the table. But at the same time, there's nothing else we could have done because our plan said to stay basically and um, and that's essentially that that's trade stands out to us because it hurt for a little bit it's a lot of money especially for us we're rather you could call it the new professionals if you like but um at the same time we know that this is our plan and essentially it was a good trade you have to look at the bigger picture ultimately it's it's, it's one trade um yeah it's annoying obviously the potential of that trade was i think almost double that it was about four thousand dollars um you know, you're going to have those days where it just doesn't go according fully to plan. Uh, but all you can do is you can look back and say, yeah, I stuck to the plan. I did what I could. I, I didn't I didn't make any mistakes there. And ultimately, the market just wasn't cooperating that day. And that's, you have to accept that. That's a part of trading. Yeah. Do you think um, in terms of because obviously you've guided each other through trading um, has there been anyone else inside or outside of trading that you guys have learnt from or that you look up to? I, mean, I personally look up to a lot of people. Um, I've been sort of, well, I can call them my mentors because, I mean, even though they haven't physically taught me really, but it's essentially trading is a game where, well, actually, if you want to find success in anything, just basically find the best people in that business and follow them. So, um, in my case, well, we mentioned Andrew Aziz from Bearable Traders and he's kind of the stock market side of things and we just love the way he trades. In my case also, I followed Jason Grayson for a long time. Um, I just think he's not only a great forex coach, but he also has tons of free advice on basically on wealth mindset, basically, and that sort of thing. So he's, he's a great person to follow as well, in my opinion. And again, I was etching Crescent like a trade podcast. I've listened to that for years as well now. So essentially just basically finding the best people in the business and following them. Yeah. Okay. And T, did you have anyone that you uh, look up to? Uh, well, for myself, it's really just people that the Michael has shown me as well. Um, like I said, Andrew is his, um, Etienne. He's 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 great. Um, as as is uh, Jason Greystone and his and his uh, his advice. We also we also follow mm. uh, follow a, a guy called uh, Zed Monopoly on YouTube. Um, Actually, he has a, a pretty good, actually a decent course on trading, sort of, uh, as a beginner. Uh, again, focusing more on stocks, but just for myself, it was also more about learning the mindset from him of that sort of stone-cold discipline and, and 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 not ultimately not being too greedy as well, which sometimes it's hard, obviously, if you're up in a winning trade, 
to leave money on the table. You know, it's so yeah, I'd, I'd say Zed as well. He was uh, so someone just who again not quite the, the trading style that we subscribe to now, but it was it was more the psychology side of things for me, learning from him. Yeah, I would agree. The psychology from Zed was yeah, definitely. And um, his his approach basically just stone cold emotion, as T said, and that's that's another person I forgot to mention. That. As well, we actually follow them. There's a channel on YouTube called UK Spread Betting, and there's a guy called Mark. He runs that channel, seems to be, and he he has a lot of great advice as well. So really, just people, basically people that are again have a good reputation in the business, and essentially don't try to sell you dreams, but rather yeah. you know, uh, a proper way to learn things, and that's that's about it. Yeah. So have you guys done any courses um, in terms of psychology or uh, technical analysis? Um, I've I've personally done courses in, in trading myself. Like I've taken a few forex courses um, in the past. Um, but psychology wise, we just essentially well, again, T has a background in psychology, so it's it's a lot of things. Basically, we took from the gym as well. We compare a lot of the things to just normal life. Essentially, it's like so psychology wise, we don't have to take any courses because I think in that area right now we're quite solid. So yeah, I was going to say. Um... In terms of what you guys have been talking about, the mentality uh, seems to be what makes you guys profitable. Um, what would you say is the thing that makes you profitable? I think, uh, yeah, what you said there, mentality is one thing because, um, again, we we went from essentially crying about every single loss we took to now <laughs> being uh, basically stone cold with the emotions, like it's. We will lose. We have no. It has no effect on our day at all. We win. It's the same case. It's um essentially it's it's when you really disconnect yourself from that win or loss, and if you follow the plan, there's nothing else you could have done. There's all. It's almost like a, there's like a little flowchart if you like. It's do you have a problem? If the answer is yes, can you change it? No, then don't worry. Yes, you can change it. No, don't worry. And if you have a problem, you can't. And and you don't have a problem. Well, then don't worry either. So it's basically just. A very simple approach to just not get the trade, not let the, don't let the trading get the better of you. Basically, just disconnect yourself from it. I agree with that. Mentality is, at least in my opinion, probably the most important thing in this business. Obviously, you need it. You need a, You need a strategy. You need, you need to have a profitable strategy. But that being said, there are so many strategies you can follow that will make you money. It's a case of will you stick to it. And ultimately, will you stick to it when it's a losing month or say a, a, a losing three months even? Because that's possible. And how you deal with that in your own mind is ultimately what it comes down to. It's everything, you know, everything stems from the mind. So if, you, if you've if you got that nailed down, then you probably won't have any issues. Absolutely. So do you, how long did it take you guys to develop that kind of mindset? Because um, obviously it doesn't seem like it's something that I mean, I don't know, but it doesn't seem like something that can just be switched on and off for someone that hasn't had the training, I guess you could say, or the experience of doing that. Well, I would say a lot of practice. Um, yeah. Our old, we, we started working like seriously on trading together in September, was it? Let's September say. last year. And well, ever since then, it, it took our first three, four months we we didn't have that mindset we we sort of knew what we were getting at you know we, we were kind of on the right track but we certainly weren't there ultimately came we, we really got it when we started with ftmo because then then you're accountable you know then you, you then you can't make those mess ups you, everything has to be you know ac go, going according to plan so i mean it took and obviously if you look at the bigger picture as well from you know when we both started our journeys in trading you know it, it's a few years so it, it can take a while, but it really, you really just have to practice and practice, and you know, again, learn learn from the best. It's really hard to it's, it's really hard to, to learn these things yourself. Well, to, uh, obviously, both of us were helped by you know people people on YouTube and you know and and, 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 and books that were written on trading. So, oh, the rules. I mean, essentially, basically, what was for us? Um, it's almost a case of our backs against the wall. And we kind of had an option to either you stick to 100% or it's going to take too long. So we knew that FTMO was a life-changing opportunity for us. So we basically had to take our training to the next level because, again, the end goal was so big that if we failed it, 
then it's it's almost knocks up knocks back your confidence. Yeah. And also speaking about their solid mindset, it's, it's we've when we've met we sort of clicked the right way because we seem to have the same vision. Um and basically again, we're back to the gym. We are the gym and we always analyzed our performance in the gym. And always with the same way, it's like basically practicing the same thing every single day and you will become good at it at some point. It's just no way around it because it's that's how it, that's how life works really. <laughs> Yeah, it's about, it's about <laughs> uh, every day, you know, turning up and uh, can build a house that you lay a, a brick one by one. You know, you don't just build a house in a day. It takes it takes a long, long time. Yeah. Um, so obviously you guys are quite short term traders and you've successful um, with FTMO. Do you think that swing traders or longer term traders can be profitable with FTMO? Because um, I know they, they've got some rules, haven't they, around uh, trading? I think if you're a longer term trader, I, I think again, it goes back to what I said before about really knowing your strategy. And I'm sure they let you open trades overnight. Um, I, I don't think they let you open trades over the weekend. Again, I'm not 100% sure because that's not the way we trade. But you can still swing trade as long as you know your strategy very well and um, as long as you have enough setups. The reason we like short term trading basically is because. For example, a trend on the daily chart will take, say, a week or two to, to, to form. Whereas on on a five-minute chart, you have many intraday trends and there's like just basically a lot more opportunity to trade. But going back to the question, I think swing traders can easily pass the challenge. But I think it, again, comes down to really knowing your strategy and knowing your numbers and preparing for the wars. And um, again, just be very prepared. Yeah. And... The kind of final question here is what would you say is the number one piece of advice for anyone looking to do FTMO? Well, I think my, my opinion is well, you obviously have to know to trade and you need to have some experience under your belt. And that's why they sort of have a fee because they don't just, they don't just want people randomly trading and basically making some money out of luck. You need to be decent with your trading. And I really think FTMO, even if you fail the challenge, it will still make you a better trader because you really nail down your risk management. And I think a lot of people have said that, like reading other people's testimonials, it seemed that FTMO has at least improved their trading in terms of risk management and, and basically emotional control. But number one, yeah, advice is basically just know your strategy very well and um, and just remember to stick with the plan. Okay, cool. Um, and T, do you have any psychology tips for people looking to do FTMO? I completely agree with what Michael said again. So to begin, obviously, have that strategy. Make have, make sure you've back tested it. Make, know the statistics. Know you know the, the, and the, the potential success rate. And then yeah, from from a sort of psychology perspective, is stick to the plan. You know you can't have emotions here. You, it's you need to be incredibly black and white in your trades. You need to have you, you know, you can't be chasing. If you have a certain, you know, uh, a certain target for a win, you know, take that money. Don't think, oh, it'll keep going. Well, okay, what happens if you leave that trade open and it, and it doesn't and it, and it drops back down? You know, it stops you out. Just stick to the plan. You have to have that stone cold discipline. And for me and for Michael as well, I think that that's really what what made us pass the challenge and is making us more successful traders every day. Oh, the hundred percent agree. Yeah. I'd also like to say, basically, also understand that the challenge is probably the most difficult part of it because that's where you actually have the biggest profit target. Um, so this is the most difficult part. But then remember how, like in our case, we knew that the opportunity was massive or in our case, life changing to an extent. So just remember how the end goal is really, it's a huge opportunity. So um, the challenge is the hardest part. So you might have to make some tweaks for the challenge if your strategy hasn't been really returning as much an amount, but then for example, the second stage, you have twice as long and the target is, well, it's, it's only f it's half the target, basically. And then once you are traded with them, then there is no target at all. So it's, again, it's the challenge is the hardest part. And if you can prepare well for that, then if you can prepare well for that, then you can go really far with it. And also from a mindset perspective is never give up because you don't know, you don't know if you're going to have a bad month in the market. It's like, you know, your strategy could have like a 80% chance of either making you 10 15 percent a month whatever it is and say you say you, you don't you, you know you fail you lose five percent in a month 
try again. You know, you just had a bad month. Never give up. And it's the same if you're funded as well. If you go, if you're going through a hard time, if you're not making money that month, that's fine. You know, look at the bigger picture. You can't make money every month. Ultimately, it's, it's, I'm sure some people probably do it, but it's it's hard. It's 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 really difficult. So you just have to just have to have resilience around you uh, and accept that you're not always gonna make money, but don't, yeah. don't let that bring you down. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, and also, where can people find you? Um, I don't think I don't have anything particular to add. I mean, I've, I can easily send my Instagram link to yourself if you'd like to potentially put it below the description or something. And yeah. Yeah, that's really that. the only way I'm really... I've, I've, we've been both quite private about our journey. And we haven't really been... Un- until that post I made on Etienne's group about the funding and everything, I haven't really said anything because we both quite like to be private. But again, if, if people need any help at all, I'm, I'm very happy to help on my Instagram. So I'll, I'll send you a link to that. I'll do, okay. I'll do the cool. same as well, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks guys for getting on the podcast with me today. Um, yeah, cheers. Perfect. Well, thank you for having us. Cheers for that. Thank you, Jacob.